Hey guys, welcome back. Android P port was out for treble enable phones for about a week and after DP3 we also got DP4 port for many phones. I've installed it on my OnePlus 5T and let's see if DP4 is any better compared to the previous release. About the installation process, it's everything same as installing DP3. I've made a detailed guide on how to install DP3 on your 5T. You can check the description for that video link. All you need to do is download these four files, one of them being system image zip file and the other are post.gsi files. So once you have downloaded, replace the dp3 system image and post.gsi files and follow the same procedure for installing the ROM. Anyways, let me give you a brief description on what you need to do. First, go to TWRP recovery. Here I have used codework X version. Go to wipe format data type S to continue. Reboot to TWRP recovery again. Wipe tab, do a factory reset. Transfer Moki ROM and No Variety zip file to your phone and flash them together as normal zip files by going to the install tab. After flashing is done, reboot your phone, finish the initial Moki setup. Once you see the home screen, reboot back to recovery. Wipe tab, do your factory reset again. Now go to your PC where you have saved the system files and post GSI files. Extract the system image from the zip file. Copy the .img file along with post.gsi files in call to zip file and measures for routing. Now go to the install tab, install image, select the .img file which is transferred and flash to the system partition. Now go back to home screen, mount tab, select vendor partition, back to home screen, install tab and select all three post.gsi files and flash them. Now go back to mount tab, mount system and vendor partitions, home screen, install tab, Select in call to zip file and magic zip files and flash them. Once it is done, reboot your phone. Initial boot sequence is done. We have the Android beta program screen. And first thing you will notice that USB debugging is working and also MTP mode is working even without setting the default USB configuration to file transfer. System lag and persistent notifications are still there. Lag can be fixed by installing Google Play Services app and also you can add Google account after installing Google Play Services. And for persistent notifications, force stop each one of these notifications. And for pixel setup, force stop once and when the notification comes back again, connect to Wi-Fi and now you will be able to finish the setup. Even with DP4, there is no fingerprint option under security and location, which can be fixed by rooting your phone, install any file manager app, give root permissions to the file manager, go to the root folder, vendor, lib64, hw folder and here search for fingerprint.codex.so file, long press on it and change the name to fingerprint.qcom.so and reboot your phone. Once you have rebooted your phone, you can clearly see that there is pixel imprint option under security and location which is nothing but FP setup. For the first few seconds, the FP setup will yield no response. Just keep touching it with your finger again and again and within 5 seconds you will be able to enroll your fingerprint. And as you can see here, the FP unlock is fast, about 1 second to unlock. About face unlock, there is no default option but you can enroll it under smart unlock. It works fine for the first time but when you lock your phone and try to unlock it with face again, it won't just unlock until you reboot your phone. About UI changes, DP4 is a minor update. The first change is now under display tab. As you can see, there is device theming option just like Oreo 8.1. The default option is automatic based on wallpaper or you can set it to dark or light based on your preference and the theming applies to the notification panel, app drawer and volume slider but not the settings panel. Next we have minor update for P gestures. Now the slider extends all the way from right edge to left edge. Previously with DP3 you can only slide from center to right edge and vice versa. Next, when you click the clock icon in the notification panel, it opens the clock app and under sound tab, now we have a separate volume slider for the call volume and these are the changes with the DP4. About things which are working and not working with this ROM, no issues with Wi-Fi, mobile network but still there is no Vivo LTE support. Audio works via speaker and Bluetooth and video playback had no problems. Apart from no 4G calling, I did not face any other problems with this ROM. So that's it, if you don't mind no VLT, you can surely give this a ROM try and if you people are facing any issues regarding ROM installation or the ROM itself, do let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button if you find this video helpful and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.